So our project uses IBM Bluemix, which already has a pre-trained visual recognition framework. So we're going to be tapping into that rather than scraping the internet for loads of hot dog images. Now, in a later episode, if you guys want, maybe I can show you how to use TensorFlow to train your very own neural net and adapt this app for other functionality. So let me know in the comments below what else you want us to uh, teach you and show you. Um, okay, so in order to use IBM Watson, you have to sign up for a Bluemix account, um, which is free to sign up. Um, and in order to use their visual recognition, you can classify 250 images for free per day. Um, and thereafter, every single image is 0.2 cents. So it's relatively reasonable. And especially when we're just learning, it doesn't really matter so much. So we're not gonna get you to pay for anything during this tutorial. Um, everything is going to be free. So if you head over to ibm.com slash Watson slash developer cloud, you'll be able to create a new Bluemix account. So just hit start free on Bluemix um, or follow the link in the text below. And once you've signed up, um, you will get access to the catalog. And the one that we are particularly interested in is this visual recognition. If you head over here and enable it by hitting create, then you will add this functionality to your account. So once you've enabled that, you should be able to go into the menu and go over to your dashboard. And here it should show the services that you have enabled. So it says that here I'm using the visual recognition service. Then if you click on this, it'll take you to something that looks like this page. And we want to go to service credentials and grab the key. So when you click view credentials, it'll show you your URL to hit up and also the API key, which is essentially the one that we're gonna be needing. So copy everything that's between the quotes and keep that in a safe place. So rather awkwardly, in order to incorporate the Swift SDK from IBM Bluemix, you have to use uh, Carthage um, as your library management system. So some of you guys might know that I'm quite partial to CocoaPods, um, just because I think it's faster and I think it's in a lot of ways easier, but that's a long debate and you get into the sort of tabs versus spaces, Carthage versus CocoaPods. Android versus iOS, um, which we don't have time for today. So if you don't have Carthage installed, then you're gonna have to go into the terminal and install it using Homebrew. So as always, uh, do a brew update. So if you don't have Homebrew installed, um, I've included some instructions below this video um, to show you how you can do that. But once you've done that, then installing Carthage is as easy as um, writing brew install Carthage. And that will take a little while. So for me, it's already installed, so it's not going to let me do it again. Um, but essentially, you just have to be patient and wait for it to be done. So once you see your username and the dollar sign, which is the prompt, then you know that it's done. So once you've installed Carthage, then we have to create what's called a cart file. So it's very easy, and all you have to do is just open up text edit in your Mac. Um, and we are going to go to the IBM Bluemix. Swift SDK. So again, all of these links are already included um, in the text below this video. So if you can't see what the URL says or you can't follow what I'm writing, then just go over and click on the link. It'll be a lot easier. So this is the Watson Developer Cloud Swift SDK repo on GitHub. Um, and you can have a quick read um, about how it works and what services are available. But essentially what we want to do right now is to install it onto our Xcode project. And as you can see, they uh, only have Carthage and no CocoaPods. I have no idea why, but no matter, it's not that difficult either. So all you need to do is copy this GitHub command and head over to our text edit and just paste it in here. And the really important part here is that we don't want to save this as rich text because rich text tends to like to format quotation marks um, into something that looks pretty but doesn't really work as code. So we're going to hit shift, command and T in order to convert this document to plain text. Um, if you don't like shortcuts, I can't understand why that would be, but you can also go to format and down here it's make plain text. So we're going to change this from rich text to plain text, hit OK, and then we're going to save this document. And it's really important that you uncheck this. We don't want the dot text extension. So we are going to save this file um, and call it our cart file and hit save. 
So that should now be on my desktop and we're going to create a new folder that's just going to be called seafood. And I'm going to drag my cart file into this new folder. So remember where the directory exists. So the seafood uh, lives inside desktop. So while we've got that cart file open, I'm going to add some other uh, dependencies that we're going to be needing during this tutorial. So the ones that we're going to be using is one called SV Progress HUD. There we go, it really comes up because I use it so often. And this is something that'll just allow us to import a spinner um, into our project really, really easily. So as you can see, they, um, they have CocoaPod support as well as Carthage. So all we need to do is just copy that line and paste it into our card file. And that's all we need for this project to work. So go ahead and save this and then close down text edit. And we're going to head back into terminal where we are going to change directory into desktop slash seafood. Okay, and once we are inside the seafood directory, we're going to run the command Carthage update so that it'll install and download all the things that we need. So this can take a little while. Um, I would recommend to get a cup of tea at this point, um, depending on your internet speed. It can take anywhere between five and ten minutes. Okay, so now it's done and you can tell that it's done because it's showing you your prompt. So in this particular color scheme it has the flashing cursor but the thing that you're looking for is essentially your username and the dollar sign. So if you've seen our videos on how to use CocoaPods and how to use the terminal, how to use Git, then all of this will be very familiar and if you haven't then go ahead and have a look at those. So once that is done then we won't really need terminal anymore but we will need to go into Xcode. So once you've opened Xcode we're going to create a new Xcode project and it is going to be a single view application um, and we're just going to call it seafood. I hope I'm not infringing Jin Yang's copyright. Okay, so um, the important thing is if you don't have a team, if you don't have a registered Apple developer account, then you can leave the team blank, but give the organization name your own name and give the organization identifier um, something. So it's a reverse domain name. So for example, our domain is londonabrew.com and also at brew.co. So depending on, um, so if you don't have your own website, then you can just replace this part with your own name. As long as it's something unique that can identify your app on all of the million other apps on the Apple App Store, then you'll be good to go. So make sure that the language is Swift and make sure that the device is iPhone. Um, and we're not gonna be running any tests today or using core data, so we'll leave those unchecked. And when it asks you to save, I'm just gonna save it inside the seafood folder that we already created on the desktop. So I'm gonna hit create and there we go. So our project is ready. And now we just need to drag in those uh, frameworks that we incorporated using Carthage. So in order to do this, if you click on the seafood um, blue icon here, you should be able to see project and targets. You wanna make sure that the seafood target is selected and you wanna be under the general tab. So while you're here, if you scroll down, you can see a section called embedded binaries. So now if you head over to your finder and you open up that seafood folder where we have our cart file and our Carthage folder, you want to open this Carthage folder and open build, open iOS. Then we're going to list everything not by a name or size, but by kind. And we're gonna select the uh, frameworks that we need. So for this project to work, we are going to need the Visual Recognition V3 framework, and also the SV Progress HUD, and also RESTKit. So once you've got all three selected, holding down the command button, you can drag them all into this embedded binaries part and make sure that where it says copy items if needed is checked and then hit finish. So now you'll see all your frameworks appear in your project and everything is now good to go. So now we're all set up and we've got all our frameworks that we need incorporated into our brand new seafood project. 
In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you can bring up the uh, UI image picker so that you'll be able to select an image or use the camera to um, take photos for your visual recognition. So I'll see you on the next lesson.